What's going on everybody? Welcome back. Thank you for watching. This video ought to be interesting. So in one of my videos last week, I was shooting a lawnmower blade and a lot of you guys noticed a little ricochet. Just a little ricochet there. Now that was actually a 10 millimeter Underwood Extreme Defender, which is a solid copper bullet. And you could see that uh, that entire bullet stayed intact and bounced back towards me. Now, I don't think it was quite as bad as everyone thought it was. It you know, wasn't going very fast and it landed on the ground a few feet away from the target. Um, but with lead bullets, you generally aren't gonna get ricochets like that because they splatter, especially when they contact something as hard as steel. Now, we've all seen the video of the guy shooting the 50 BMG where the entire bullet comes straight back for his head and takes his ear pro off. Ooh, oh, shit. really? That is incredibly rare, and that's probably why that video has 20 million views or whatever it does, because it just doesn't happen very often. But glancing ricochets are much more common. So today, I thought we would put this to the test and try to intentionally ricochet some different bullets and see how dangerous a ricochet can actually be. Let's do it. So the problem with trying this experiment on a steel target like this is that they're literally designed to move when a bullet hits them and prevent ricochets from happening. So what I did is I gorilla taped the bottom of this steel target to the target stand so that it's solid and it cannot move. And then I tilted it back just a hair so that the steel plate is pretty much straight up and down, which should help assist us in getting some good ricochets. So that duct tape's probably not gonna last too long, but we'll try it. But first, what I wanna do is try to show you guys a slow-mo shot of how bullets basically disintegrate on impact when they hit something like steel. So for this, we're gonna use the Canik TP9 SFX 9 millimeter pistol, and I got my slow-mo remote in my other hand. And we are at a safe distance. Like I said, these bullets fragment pretty good when they hit something like steel. So let's try it. So hopefully you can see that. Obviously you don't wanna to be too close when you're shooting steel because even big fragments could penetrate skin and obviously do damage. But as far as getting an entire bullet to hit a target and come straight back, it's pretty unlikely. On something like steel anyway. So now what I've done is I've angled our steel target just a little bit and probably three feet in front of it, I hung a paper torso target. So I wanna to try to ricochet a bullet off our steel plate and send it back into our paper target and see if it stays in one piece, if it even goes back that far. What kind of ricochet are we actually getting? I'm gonna try to run the slow-mo with this one as well, and we're actually gonna start with the 10 millimeter Underwood Extreme Defender. This was the ricochet culprit from the last video, so let's see if it does the same thing. Remember, this is a solid copper bullet, not lead, so it shouldn't break apart like the other ones. Well, I stand corrected. On the steel plate, even the Underwood Extreme Defender did basically disintegrate into 100 pieces. So as you can see, at least with steel targets, straight on ricochets are almost hard to even recreate. They definitely can happen, especially if your target has divots in it. Um, but with, you know, a steel target that's in decent shape and using, you know, most ammo, you're not gonna get straight back ricochets. That's just a ton of energy transfer to dump all into the target and then send straight back at the shooter. But it can happen, and you should obviously always be back at a safe distance. But now we're gonna start trying much more likely ricochet scenarios, and that's glancing ricochets. So these can happen on pretty much any surface, and I would imagine still be extremely deadly. Just imagine a bullet glancing off the ground, skipping upward, um, you know, a bullet hitting a concrete wall or something like that. It's gonna have quite a bit of velocity left on it. So now, what I have set up is my steel target is basically completely sideways. And then a few feet behind it, I have a paper target. So we're gonna try to ricochet a bullet off the steel into the paper and see if it stays in one piece. We're going back to the nine millimeter for this one. And once again, I'm gonna try to do the slow-mo. If I can't get the shots right, I'll probably go two hands on the pistol. That was a ricochet. <laughs> so interestingly enough, it looks like that bullet sparked a little bit and sent a couple flaming balls of shrapnel off to the side when it hit our steel target. But you can definitely see where that one hit, left that glancing mark on our steel torso plate. And then off on our paper target here, we definitely have a pretty good bullet hole right there. So I'll probably move this over just a hair. It looks like we were barely on the target and the bullet definitely broke apart a little bit, but you can see a big chunk went straight into our paper. Let's try it again. That one's almost a bullseye. Almost another bullseye. Those are all pretty close together. 
So it just occurred to me that if you got really familiar with how to do this, you could learn how to ricochet bullets off of walls and send them around corners without putting yourself in any danger. Obviously, it's kind of a far-fetched idea, but would be cool nonetheless. So here are the others that we just shot. You can see this one here actually came really close to hitting the edge of the target, but the other two are pretty similar to the first one. And then on our paper target here, you can see that all three of those are right in the dead center of that target so we're actually pretty accurate with these ricochets but now we got to see how much these bullets actually have left on them when they're hitting our paper target and are they going fast enough to do any real damage let's try something more reactive obviously paper is easy to get through that doesn't really tell us how fast these bullets are going but if it gets through this can of shaving cream i would say that's absolutely a deadly round and it's a tiny target so this will be a pretty impressive shot if i can make it first shot <laughs> that is awesome. Ricocheted off the steel into our tiny little can of shaving cream. Wow. That is extremely fun, I'm not gonna lie. Well, on camera, it might look like I just shot the shaving cream, but I'm hoping on the slow-mo you'll be able to see the ricochet bounce off the steel plate. But you can definitely see we now have five glancing ricochet marks on that steel plate. And based off how that thing exploded and went all over everything, I would say it was going pretty fast. Here's our shaving cream can. Look at our backstop. <laughs> Good grief, man. But yeah, here's our shaving cream can, and you can see that it just blew straight through both sides of that thing, which tells me that that bullet was definitely going fast enough to do some damage. This is fun. <laughs> Let's try a watermelon. I wish I could make these shots one-handed every time so I could use my slow-mo remote and really slow it down, but it's too much of a risk and I don't want to mess it up, so. Let's try a watermelon. I don't think this is gonna explode like the shaving cream, but let's see. Not bad. <laughs> Let's see if we can hit it again. So the watermelon stayed on our sawhorse and I got four or five rounds in it bouncing them off the steel. Well, I kicked it off of there like an idiot, but you can see it blew our watermelon apart pretty good. Obviously the slow-mo will show it to us better, but that first round took like half the watermelon off. So then a little bit better than I thought it would. And on our sandbags that are sitting back here, you can see we had a couple of those nine millimeter bullets go straight into those sandbags. This was completely clean before I shot that watermelon. Very interesting. Please forgive my immaturity, but this is way too much fun. <laughs> oh, and by the way, here's all the marks on the steel from when I was shooting that watermelon. They're actually kind of cool. Obviously they're shaped like footballs, but you can see how some of that copper rubs off when those bullets just barely graze that steel target. This becomes like its own little world of trick shots you could try. <laughs> All right guys, well I think I proved the point. I planned on trying some other calibers and trying some like glancing off the ground and off different stuff, but the steel basically showed it perfectly. And as you can see, ricocheting bullets are absolutely a real concern, especially depending on what they're ricocheting off of and at what angle it is. I will say most of the time shooting steel targets are safe. In my experience, most of the ricochets come from softer steel. Like when I shot the sledgehammer or the lawnmower blade, that kind of stuff can give just a little bit. And that's much more likely to send a bullet back than a steel target that's made to be shot. They're just so hard that bullets tend to disintegrate when they hit them. So just be careful what you're shooting. Always be back at a safe distance. I know a lot of people think that I'm not. I definitely am. I've shot <laughs> millions of rounds and I, you know, I, I know how steel works. And uh, trust me, I don't want to put myself in harm's way any more than you guys want to see me being put in harm's way. So I would never do anything unsafe. 
uh, but ricochets are just always something to be aware of. And as you saw in this video, if they're done correctly, they can absolutely be extremely dangerous. So be careful out there. But if you guys like this video, please let me know down in the comments. Let me know what other type of ricocheting you would like to see me do. This has opened up a whole new world for me and I'd be glad to come out here and play with this a little bit more. It is a ton of fun. But if you like the video, guys, as always, please hit that like button for me. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.